I've seen also a triple yin and yang, where three entities are changing each other in a circle. This is a, a rotating tripod. The swastika is a very simplified representation of a rotational quadrupole, a fourpole, plus minus, plus minus, rotating. We would see very soon that this is exactly the case. Some Russian experiments prove that the swastika is basically a representation of their quadrupolar anti-gravity drive. Another contact here report, UFO's contact from the planet Ayarga. Star Wars. I mean Star Trek. Looks like some of the figures. Uh, this is a creature that uh, appeared from. You, you, on some of these things, you may make a close in. Can you do it with the remote? Fascinating. And. Uh, these are creatures that evolved from amphibians. Incredible swimmers can swim five times as fast as we do. Have very sturdy skulls because they are the G-force is three times as strong as ours, and the uh, height of a deadly foe is just 60 centimeters. If they fall from more than 60 centimeters, they die. Here, deadly foe is about two floors high. Well, one, one story, maybe two story depends how. Anyway. Incredible book. The contactee was a, a, an architect and an engineer by training, so he left brilliant drawings. I mean, he retained most of what he saw in one, uh, in one day holographic presentation aboard this alien craft that he was taken on from his boat in Holland. And uh, what this guy described is a very detailed three-dimensional cutout of their saucer craft as big as Queen Mary, this is 300 yards diameter giant craft that they use to navigate the universe but doesn't have superluminal velocity so basically these are like flying cities they would fly many generations in them exploring different planets and stars and the key component of this craft are these donuts, these rings on the periphery of the craft, these two and this triangular cavity. The triangular cavity and these two donuts. These two donuts are counter-rotating uh, synch uh, synchrotron rings. Uh, it's fascinating. Do they have to rotate or can they just send particles? Around? No. What the guys figured out that instead of spinning the whole hull of the craft, Instead of spinning brute mass, a lot of tonnage at slow RPMs, you can spin at high RPMs a very little mass and you would arrive at the same product. It's mass <coughs> times RPMs. So instead of spinning the whole craft in a very inefficient drive, all the bearings would wear down as was the case of the first German saucers. They would keep the craft stationary and they would spin few elementary particles in these two rings at near relativistic speed so basically their weight is almost nothing but the speed is almost everything so they get the same effect again we have spinning if we can't spin the brute mass of the craft we can spin a magnetic field like these electric motor well it's a combination because the, ele the magnetic field spins but also the mechanical part of the electric motor spins uh, there have been patents patents in, in, in Germany in the 30s for creation of a spinning magnetic field with a stationary non-spinning hardware. So if you go a step further, you don't even have to have an electric motor to create a spinning magnetic field. You would have some sections that would be turning on and off and on and off in a circle and they would create a spinning magnetic field. I mean, this is technology that has been in the patent office since the 30s. Here the Iargans are spinning elementary particles. Uh, I heard another story, government contacted that what they did was they got a big quartz crystal, a cylinder of a crystal, then they got a metal, uh, a magnet wire, wire of a magnetic material, and they won some electric conductor over this magnetic long 
bendable wire, whatever, like a thin sausage. They wound the electric conductor around it and they obtain an electromagnet. Then this pliable electromagnet was wound around this big quartz crystal, which resembles, by the way, a millstone. This is probably where the story of that millstone in the Mahabharata legend came from, or maybe there are countless other physical ways to create such a millstone resembling source of drive. But anyway, when the magnetic, basically it's kind of a linear magnet, this magnetic wire is wound around the quartz crystal and then we have the current over it, it would help all the electrons and maybe even the nuclear particles inside to orient themselves and start spinning along the vertical axis because if they are oriented in all chaotic different directions it cancels all, all these chaotic the directions of spinning they cancel each other and the net effect is zero so that's why things wait on the planet otherwise if the if they didn't cancel anything they wouldn't wait anything and they would fly away from the planet whoever created the world thought that well we have to keep the buggers on the planet if they start floating freely in space we would lose them so that's why in normal crystal objects uh, all these spins, all these little rotations of electrons and nuclear <coughs> particles and everything are oriented chaotically in every direction. But if we can reorient them in the same vertical direction, in the same direction, vertical, then we obtain what... Uh, sorry. What the Iardans did with their drive they were spinning few elementary particles in a synchrotron ring in the quartz crystal they don't inject the electrons are already there in the crystalline lattice of the quartz crystal they just have to reorient them and to spin them in a desired direction so you can spin the particles along a giant loop around the craft or you can spin the particles many particles along the nuclear the, the nuclei of the atoms I mean the universe is so uh, boundless, and there are so many ways, different ways of producing anti-gravity. I repeat, the Pleiadians discovered 1600 basic modes of anti-gravity propulsion in their wanderings through the universe, and they have on their computers identified a million and eight hundred thousand civilizations. And among them, they have 1600 basic different propulsion modes. Here in this lecture, we will touch upon probably 20 or 30. So, this is a drawing of the Iargon drive, the synchrotrons, the blue one spinning clockwise and the red one spinning anti-clockwise. A Russian contactee, a colonel from the Red Army, uh, was told by his aliens after they gave him a joyride <coughs> in, his cra in their craft that, oh, it's very easy to produce anti -gravity. it's a spinning nuclear reactor. You have a big nuclear reactor along a very powerful shaft spinning around and by lowering or pulling out of the control rods you regulate the, 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 the anti-gravity force of the drive. The reactor is spun around by uh, solar energy and it spins constantly in probably along ideal bearings that don't wear and tear and, don't, and the RPMs don't die down. So by pulling out the rods the saucer rises by dropping down the rods, the saucer lands. And there is a smaller second nuclear reactor perpendicular to the first one that would push in this direction so that the saucer would fly horizontally parallel to the surface of the planet. Another case of rotation. Uh, a third contactee case, the UMO Craft, a contact in Spain, talks again about some electromagnetic cavities along the periphery of the craft, a donut-shaped electromagnetic cavity. They don't give much details, but I wouldn't be amazed that this is a system very similar to the Iargon system, a counter-rotating uh, tuned beams of...